Yeah. I wanna be a billionaire. Uh, I ain't getting no sleep nah. till I see a milli every week. Yeah. I wanna be a billionaire. Uh, I ain't getting no sleep nah. till I see a billy every week. Go. I wanna be a billionaire. Billionaire. I wanna be a billionaire. Billionaire. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of Sleep is for Billionaires, the podcast. I am your host, Johnny Vegas. Now, today, I got a very special guest on my show, ladies and gentlemen. You're in for a treat, so take some notes. Now, this man is here to help singers, producers, rappers, anybody in the music industry with his new business called Boost Collective. Now, they're basically a one-stop shop for the artist development platform, ladies and gentlemen. So you need to get in tune with this man, Jabari Banza Manga. How you doing today, King? Man, I'm feeling amazing. Thank you for that. <laughs> that introduction was so well done. I don't even know if I deserve it. <laughs> yes, uh, you're well deserved, man. With the with the mission that you guys got, you and your other three founders, I mean, the other two founders for this business, man. Because I started out as an artist as well, and it was so hard to focus on the artistry and the business because it's 90% business, 10% talent, right? So it's like you got so much to do. When you got when you have time to write a song, never right. So it's best that we have a team and a business like yours behind us, really take managing the business um, of the artistry, so where we can just focus on the creative side of things. But you know, I'm glad you came on the show today, man. I, I definitely want to dive into this business. But before we do that, I kind of want to dive in and find out a little bit more about you, man. So tell me, man, where you from? You know, what was your dreams prior to this? Let's start from where you from. All right, perfect. So I guess I'm going to go based off Boost Collective. We are a Canadian company, and a lot of people don't really know that. So I'd say entering the music industry, which, you know, the U.S. is kind of the top. It's the king. It was kind of a weird transition. So what happened is Damien and Ronan, they created Boost Collective back in 2017. And I was off doing some real estate, doing some other stuff because I was just I was on my hustle. You know, this is the hustler. Sleep is for billionaires. I was up at night, you know. And then so as they're forming Boost Collective, they're doing some music in, in, uh, industry promotion. And then so a little bit later, I decided to join. You know, we had an agreement. And now here we are trying to give artists the right design, marketing and promotion to really give them that support so they can make a mark in the industry. Not anything too insane, not like becoming the next Drake but making it so that they can make it a full-time thing with all the new technology innovation that's available in 2021 and beyond. Mm, gotcha. Gotcha. No, I love it, man. And I think that's a great mission statement, you know, especially now with the, uh, it's a lot of apps out there, a lot of, uh, you know, websites that allow the artists to take back the power and become independent. But at the same time, it kind of puts them back in that seat of, having to manage the business as well as the creativity all themselves. So having your platform available that kind of takes on that responsibility and allows the artists to kind of just perform their creativity side. It's great. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I kind of want to dive in more so about you before we get into the business. Cause I know you were in real estate. I kind of want to talk about how you came up, how you grew up, what, what, what things you had going on. You mentioned real estate prior to getting into the business and how you, or what kind of motivated you to make that decision, you know, because real estate, they say with, through real estate, you could build wealth, right? So why even entertain anything else? You know, what was so special about Boost Collective? Cause, but let's, let's, let's rewind that, man. Let's talk about real estate. When did you get into real estate? Tell me about that. When I get into real estate. All right. So what happened is I found this one guy, I forget his name. I think it's, it's, wholesaling elite. No, I don't remember his name, but he was just some guy I found and he was doing wholesaling, which in Canada, you can't, you can barely even wholesale. You know, there's so much regulation and everything. So mm. at the time I was like, Oh, this is sick. I want to be able to do this. And then, so I got into it under the expectation that I'll be, you know, closing a sign and closing and getting a bunch of assignment fees day after day after day. Mm. So I went ahead, went in the process of getting my license. And then as I was going and because part of the course, you need to learn the laws. It's not like a, that's the thing people don't really understand. You need to actually have a little bit of business sense before you get into it. So I would right. say the good thing, watch a bunch of videos, regardless of whether it's music or because people are putting free game out there. Just take all that free game in. Right. All right. Hell yeah. 
And so as I was going, I'm like, man, if I do this, it's going to be a lot of work. I need to go to a brokerage. And so at this point, I already knew another. He was Portuguese, right? And his name was Rolf, half Portuguese, half German. And so he was like my real estate mentor. He was showing me the game. And then he was, I was coming with him to open houses. And as I was doing this, Boost Collective was in his formation stages. And then so we were all coming together because in real estate, you got to market in any industry. You got to put yourself in a place where, you know, the right customers or fans, whatever can be, you know, can see you. Right. So the hustle is all the same. And I would say the one thing that I learned from all of that is just you got to put in the sweat. Man, if you're in real estate, especially starting off, you have no referrals. You have no previous customers. None. You need. You have no budget. You just got to be, you know, making them phone calls every day. Oh, man. Oh, you're preaching to the choir, brother. I actually just, uh, I took I took the real estate exam to do a sale, to become a sales agent two weeks ago. I failed it, but um, I got, I'm rescheduled to take it back in two months. But that shit is hard, man. Let's do the laws, man. You got to do 100 <laughs> 45 hours. I don't know how many hours you guys got to do out there, but. Well, for Woo. us, uh, we have this thing called ORIA, Ontario Real Estate Association. And so to do it now, you have to, like, they don't have this like special program anymore. It's assigned to, like, you have to go to college for it in a way. You have to do a small program like that. And so you already have to make a pretty big commitment just for that. So I can't imagine you, right? Yeah, I had to uh, go to school online, actually. It's called, I did Real Estate Express. And, you know, each state has their own laws. And in California, it was 145 hours I had to do. So, you know, I, I passed the course, you know, but then, um, you know, I, I didn't pass the exam. I fell by like, what, like two, uh, like seven points. I had to get like a 70. I got like a 62 or 63 or some shit like that. But either way, I'm coming for it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I wish you all, you have my total respect, yo. Would you, so do you follow any real estate guys or? Yeah, all the time. I mean, Damon John, uh, shit, who else? Uh, Cardone? Carlton, uh, Carlton, I'm sorry. Uh, who else? Uh, Jay Morrison. Um, and just and just uh, a lot of developers and hard money lenders that I know personally that kind of, you know, give me some game here and there and stuff like that. Because I pretty much align myself with uh, real estate developers and hard money lenders and find them clients and make commissions that way. But through that process, you know, I kind of learn when they undergo the underwriting and stuff like that. So, you know, I try to learn a little bit as I go along to understand every side of the process, you know, when it comes to real estate development or hard money lending and stuff like that. But, you know, we all have hustles that, you know, we got to keep going, man, to keep these dreams alive. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm sure your clients, you know, are all musicians, but a lot of them, you know, can't, can't live off this dream. You know what I'm saying? So they got to keep that career going, you know, in order to fund the dream, fortunate enough to make it to then have the dream become the career, you know what I'm saying? Which is what we all want, I'm sure. So, um, okay. So now, so now you left real estate. So when they approached you about Boost Collective. Oh no, we, we just kind of like got together. There was like a real estate networking barbecue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's like a networking barbecue. And I'm like, man, I want they're like, yo, invite some people, you know, especially like all the older real estate ladies, you know who I'm talking about. They're like, man, just invite some people, have a blast. I'm like, I don't have anybody because the entire summer, it was just me grinding this out. You know, you know, those moments, I think everybody can relate. Whether you're a producer that's in your home studio, making beats, eight beats a day, morning till night, only leaving to like use a washroom and eat, just straight up locked in full hermit mode. I was in that. So I had nobody to bring. Mm. But these guys, we were cool. You know, we're sending memes about business online. We're like, all right, I like, you want to come? And they were like, mm, they're debating it, but they're like, ah, why not? And if they said no, it, I, the Boost Collective would not be where it's at right now, you know? Mm. <laughs> and then so we all linked up together and then we reached the barbecue. It was at this Polish, um, I don't know. So what, what, you're, in, uh, you're in Cali, right? Yeah, Los Angeles, yes. So how big is like the Eastern European community over there? Eastern European, I mean, um, it's a pretty diverse culture, man. You got a lot of everything. You got a lot of Asians, you got a lot of European people, Spanish people. You know, I'm probably the only Dominican here, but uh, <laughs> that's it. You know? Oh, word? Because over here is kind of like, it's, it's very multicultural. Everybody's an immigrant, basically. And so we were in like the Polish area. So we went, we were all just, you know, we had some uh, beers, we had some hot dogs. And we're like, you know. How about this music thing, you know? And then I was like, ah, oh, man, we talked about it, but nothing came out of that. We just, I went back to my grind. 
And then after that, I tried doing a little bit of like insurance sales that didn't, it wasn't something that fulfilled me. I was like, man, this is whatever. And then so I'm like, all right, real estate, it could take a while. There's a lot to it. And that's kind of like in the future thing. Cause I got to build my network. And so what am I going to do now? Then I'm like, all right, let's do some drop shipping. Everybody's been drifting. You know, that moment where you just try everything. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to try drop shipping. But at this point, the boost guys were like, Hey man, like the offer still up. And I was like, you know what? Let's try this thing. just for, just for like a little bit, like three months. See how it goes. And then it's history. That's what's up, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys came together, you know, because together you can achieve more than just trying to be this one person, want to do it your way and being closed minded. I work. So uh, so on my side hustle, I actually raise um, capital for entrepreneurs, you know, when it comes to startups and stuff like that. I typically like to work with more established companies because it's easier to get an investment right when you got that track record. But, you know, I, I, in the beginning, I started working with startups and I saw how, you know, you have these young entrepreneurs that are so hungry, have a great idea, but it's their baby, right? They've been nurturing it forever, so they want things their way. So they stay so close-minded into new opportunities that they miss out on deals. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad you, you know, kind of jumped in and they allowed you to come in and they were open-minded. And I'm sure you guys collaborated different ideas. And now look where it's at. You know, you guys are doing That's what I wanted to tell you about here because it's literally all about teamwork because... As a music artist, especially starting up, you don't have no team, no collaboration, no network, nothing. So I feel like if you can try to make your team out of robots, and by that I mean softwares, tools, and websites, because imagine trying to like sell your music without DistroKid, right? Mm. Imagine like trying to create your own website, make your own RSS feed, and then stream it from there onto Spotify. It'd be, dude, I've seen the back end of distribution, it's tough. <laughs> So, and just imagine trying to design your own stuff uh, in the past, you know, we're just lucky because we have all this stuff available. So we got to use it at the beginning. I'd say leverage all software you can, but if you can also get a real human to take over like a designer, you know, start with your own thing, you know, watch tutorials, you know, get some Photoshop, but if you can, man, get your own designer. It's just, it's going to pay itself off in the near future. So break down the services of Boost Collective and how you help artists. So I'm an artist, you know, I am an artist also, by the way. So I'm coming, I'm, 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 I got all these things going on, you know, but I want somebody to just manage everything and I just focus on the music. I call Boost Collective. What are you going to offer me? All right, sick. That's a good question. So I'll start with what we will not offer you, right? Great. <laughs> We're not at the moment hosting any next level um mixing only because that process is so we've tried it but that process is so much nuance that is hard to scale right so we're like we're not gonna do that go make your song please make it good once that song is ready then come to us because at that point we're gonna offer our marketing and design services by ready you mean mix mastered isrc codes copywritten all that jazz right all right i'm sorry about that yeah, everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in. Uh, I had to tell my the guys trying to call me for something. <laughs> you know, Ronan. No problem. No problem. Okay, so what I was saying is, yeah, get all of that stuff ready because you know we're not gonna do it for you. And then once all of that is ready, <laughs> just come to us, and then we'll get it started. If you have your pre-release, then like the week of release, and then post-release. That's the way we kind of structure things. So for pre-release. Things like building hype on your social media, you're going to need some kinds of posts that are going to be more virally oriented, such as some memes do better than regular posts. They have higher reach because people share it, right? Mm -hmm. Things like we're going to help make a tailored meme. And then under that, we're going to have like your song, like second slide type thing, just to get some exposure. We're also going to create social media posts just to build some engagement. And then that's for on the design part, a cover art for you if you would like. And then we're going to help you with the promotion as well, such as getting on top playlists on Spotify because man, we've been through the curator game. I can, if you have any questions about that, I can tell you because it's, it's crazy. The can way you the get an artist are. on rap caviar? No, we cannot get an artist on, uh, that's not the right question. The right question is, have we met an artist with the drive slash potential slash budget for rap caviar? That's a different question. Ah, there we go. That's, and that's, that's what I want to hear. So, cause that was my next question more so. Your services sound great, but what, how much is it going to take to acquire your services? And then we could talk about the budget for Rap Carry along with that. 
I feel you. All right. It's actually, we make it very inexpensive. So what we do is we have, because we're actually tech guys, believe it or not. And so because of that, it was, it's pretty nice because in the music industry, there's not much tech ever. It's just record label. And then artists have no idea what's going on <laughs> basically. So we won, we, we were studying, we read every book. We are, we literally on, um, searching up what's going on live nation, Michael Rapino, all the top dudes trying to see where the trends are. We're like, all right, so this was going on. Now let's see where the smaller artist fits. And so what we did is we created a system on our website where everything is done. Half of it is automated by our internal mm -hmm. system. So all our human labor is at an all time low. And because we get high volume, we were able to make sure we can have the lowest costs for all of our services that all of our services that can be made with low cost. Like if you want designs for social media posts, go to an agency, they'll charge you maybe 300 a month and they'll do it like on a subscription or whatever you sign a contract for us. It'll be like, you know, $15 and you have three social media posts that can help get you, uh, or cover arts or, you know, banner, whatever it is. We try to keep it at a very low cost. So if you don't like it, you can always just tell us, we'll make a new one. Just, we want that system. So it's readily available at the lowest cost. Okay, now that sounds great, but now my concern, and this is on your side of the spectrum, mm -hmm. how do you guys, uh, you know, kind of assess what's worth your time, right? Like if you're charging $15 for three posts, I mean, you know, is that is that amount really worth your time or do you typically get clients who pay you thousands of dollars and you kind of just give them everything within the budget? Like, you know, I'm basically just trying to see how you guys make money and as far as the time that you're spending, because what you just said, $15, it's not really a lot of money, but do you get people who pay that little bit of money or do they come to you with a budget? Right. Well, I feel the first thing that matters is the lifetime value of, if an artist is going to work with you, you need to look at the full picture. This goes for, if you're a producer, you got to give your free beats. Uh, you know what I mean? You. This is just a given. If you're an artist, do features for other artists for free. Don't ask anything because that relationship matters most in the long run. So what we do is, it, but we, it's mostly automated. So in reality, most of it is just, you know, the code running in the back end, and we just kind of like, we green light it or say, nah, that's kind of weird. And then we fix it. And so. Okay. So it's more so of a click of a button for you. Yeah. For us, it's like a click of a button. And then we just check it that way for those things. But for bigger campaigns that are more complex, that are going to require me to like actually get in and open up Photoshop and, and those real things. Work. <laughs> yeah, for those ones, those ones are actually reserved, really. We just have, I look and I'm like, all right, this artist, we've worked working for a while. Either they have the highest potential or they have the highest budget. So we're going to come together and form something like that. Oh, okay. Copy that. Well, that makes uh, sense. Here, here's a, here's a, be a better example. Think of when you get a music manager. What mm -hmm. happens is you give him your budget and then he takes that budget and allocates that towards managing basically all the stuff that the design and marketing stuff while you focus on the music. We try to do the same thing, except we try to make sure that you're aware of every step of the way. So we, we post on our website, this service, this service, this service. And then what happens, you give us your budget. And then in return, we're going to do that in-house. So it's going to be, we're accountable for if it's good or if it's bad. That's what's up. I like it. I like it. Now, hmm. I like that a lot, actually. Okay. Okay. Now, would, would have you, well, one, let's talk about the most success that you've seen from a client. Like what's the most success, the success story that you've seen from a client? All right, Ben, we have, we have three or four campaigns going right now. We can't really talk about, but okay. one of our, well, we had uh, two kind of decent ones, right? One of it was with Trill Sammy, if you know who he is. And then another one was with DJ Diddy, who's more of a, he's the definition of an artist that made it, but isn't like next level a list Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, we were running actual Spotify campaigns for him, right? We had to go, we had to do the public relations, meaning finding the playlist, but also verifying if it's a, you know, real or fake one, because that's a huge one, right? We, mm -hmm. we have to do the work of trying to, once we find a real one, negotiating a cost because the curators, they generally want a donation because they, they need to spend their own money on running ads to grow it, to gain followers, right? And so that kind of stuff we had to run in the back end. And so we did that for those bigger campaigns. DJ Diddy and Trill Sammy were the biggest ones. Have you ever had a client who was unsatisfied with your service? All the time, man. All the time. It's the music industry. <laughs> you, anything that's, you know, 
it's, it's like the baby thing, what you said about the business. Think about the music because not everybody's music is equally good, you know? Right. And be, I'm not, I'm going to tell you straight up that your music isn't amazing. I can connect you with my producer and we can work to make their next release amazing. Or if you, it's really that bad, maybe you can take it down, work on it, put it back. And we put a campaign. We'll throw in a bunch of our services, no charge extra, but the artists are like, you know what? You screw you. So we're like, there's only so much you can really do. There's out of 100 artists that come to you, perhaps maybe you, you sell them one time, but then out of 40%, they will leave. Then 60%, you'll sell them a second time. For that remainder 60%, maybe 20% will be a third time. But then when you get to the last 15% of the original 100, they're there for life. So you got to make sure you're really, not every customer is equal. That makes total sense because I was thinking, I was like, well, how can you guarantee performance if not every song is good, right? So with that being said, what can you guarantee with Boost? You know, if I wanted to acquire your services, what is guaranteed? And, you know, because again, it boils down to the music being hot, right? Yeah. So, so, so really, is anything guaranteed? Yeah, what's guaranteed is that, so in our system, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but we use credits, Boost credits. And so boost credits, you can use those credits on any of our services. So what happens is if you buy 20 boost credits, those are yours for life until you use them. Meaning if you find dissatisfaction, we give you back your credits and then we alter your campaign to something with the same credit value, but that's going to make more sense for you. Such as if your music is not that amazing, then I'll connect you with my producer. And from there, you know, that'll use some of your credits. If your music is good, but you keep on, you know, submitting to playlists, plates that aren't good for you, then I'll personally submit for you. Or say there's many circumstances where, you know, if I was to list them, I'd be here to, we'd be here till 5 p.m., right? Right, right, right. <laughs> but it's all about, you know, making sure that they have their credits and you're going to be accountable to actually complete the service for them. That's what's up, man. I like that. Okay. Now, do you deal with uh, other entities other than musicians? Like, for example, with this podcast, you know, I definitely would like to see more growth with it. So do you help in that department as well? Well, I, Jabari, personally, sometimes do those things. If it's, but those are, I don't charge for those. I don't do them for fun, right? It's like, man, this is sick. I support it because that's not what my business is. That's just like a side, side thing I do. So if there's a guy and he has some dope stuff going on, I'm more than happy to like, you know, you know, give him a hand because at the end of the day, we're all here to help each other. Right. That's a fact, man. I wish more people thought like that. Cause it's not, you'll be surprised that that's the goal, but not too many people think like that. A lot of people are out for self and just thinking about them and theirs. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Sometimes you got to be a little selfish with your dreams and all of that. But I feel like I told you earlier together, we definitely achieve more, you know what I'm saying? So I'm all, I'm all for that. So is Boost Collective like your main business right now? Or is it just it, like- It is time? like morning till night, Boost Collective. And actually I want to talk to people about that because I, th I don't think people really understand and I can't blame them. It's such a different concept. What really happens behind the scenes at Boost Collective, right? Mm -hmm. Good because like, especially when it comes to like responding to DMs and stuff, in Boost Collective, I would consider it still a startup. Although it's making decent revenue, it's not, it's not necessarily like- it's, it's not any live nation, right? It's, it's no universal. It's no time Warner. <laughs> so mm -hmm. what happens behind the scenes, especially for you as a hustler is, you know, you have 50% creative stuff and like new stuff, basically development and 50% operations. So whereas you, you're trying to pitch to blogs or curators or DM new artists and 50% of the time you're working on making better music. It's kind of the same for us. 50% of the time is managing and working at the business, making mm -hmm. sure it runs, the 50% is working on the business. So figure out new ad campaigns, figuring out ways to improve the product, making new exclusive partnerships that's going to help the artists decrease our co like their costs and stuff. So that's like a better picture of what really goes on behind the scenes. Nah, that's what's up. Okay. Have you guys, uh, you know, have you guys made any money yet regarding, uh, and I mean, not, not making money as a business, but I mean, profit you know, based on everything that's been invested into the business, everything you're doing, the time that it takes. Have you guys like paid yourselves yet? Or is it still like getting up there? So uh, I'm not going to speak too much, but I will, I'll speak through an analogy. Is that cool? Is that cool if I answer that way? Absolutely. Answer Because, you, you know, want. the boys will be like, yo, Jabari, why are you telling our entire freaking tax information? It's going to, you know. Nah, like nah, nah. I don't even, I don't even want you to do that, man. <laughs> I just, 
Like, I just want people to know because, you know, you started away from this side of the business. And once you got in, you know, I, I want to see how it mm -hmm. grown. You know what I'm saying? And that's what really boils down to, like, if you guys made any money. So if you want to answer perfect. Let's whatever, answer. Let's answer that. I got a sick answer. So what happens is we spend between two to four hundred dollars a day on ads. Mm -hmm. So that eats a lot. Also, playlists, uh, the curators, we also give them a donation for every every uh, place. That's how you kind of get the good placements because what happens is these playlists are really high quality, but supply and demand, there's an oversupply of artists that want to get on, but there's only a small demand of slots that can be on a playlist. You don't want a 9 million song playlist, right? So we also have to deal with uh, those payments. Also, we have an actual office. So what happens is every dollar we get, we reinvest back into the business. Mm. Like we legit are only, we pay each other enough to eat. And yeah, we pay not enough to eat and to cover like our rent, you know, mm. <laughs> just have to survive. And then we're right back into it. Awesome, man. Well, congrats on that, man. So if you guys, let's say, for example, if an investor came to you and said, hey, I want to invest such and such dollars to you guys, right? What would you use the money for? That's a good question because let's say, um, a venture capitalist were to reach out to us and be like, Hey, I love what you're doing guys. You know, I'd love to get you guys some seed funding to get you into more profitability range. I would be like, that's amazing. Uh, one thing that I'd have to get with the first round of funding is definitely need to get more engineers at boost at, and engineer at boost collective, because that'll just streamline the uh, amount of innovation and you know, how much integration we can do with between everything, right. More coding better. So that's the first thing we get. And after that, hmm, no, I think that's just the only thing we get, like an engineer, maybe two, if we're really trying to speed grow. And that's about it. The rest of the things that we're doing right now, it requires too much knowledge about the industry that and no VC can really provide that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So if you had to put a number on, let's say a, a capital you're looking to raise, if you are looking to raise at this time, what number would that be? You'd have to speak to Damien, but it would definitely be. Hmm, that's a good question because I don't even, I, that's, I don't really know. Damien takes care of the financials. But one thing to keep in mind as well is the simple fact that we invest everything into ads and whatever, only for growth. It's not necessarily that we are like, you know, on a red line. So it's not a need. It's more so a ambition thing. So Damien would have the right answer, but I'll say hundred K plus else we could just do it ourselves. Right. 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 Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah. We could probably, uh, you know, talk offline about that, you know, cause like I told you, I do the capital raising for entrepreneurs and stuff like that. I mean, you know, we'll probably have to look at your business plan, assess it that mm -hmm. way and see, you know, it's up to the investor at that point, if he sees it as a viable business, but I like the niche, you know, I definitely see a, a market for, it. I mean, there's, not a shortage of artists out there, but there is a shortage of, you know, people willing to take on the artist development side of the business because it's, it's tedious, but you know, it's, it's a, it's an area that, that it's a void that needs to be fulfilled to create more artists. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there, I guess, man. But, um, okay. So tell me, what do you see this? Because what do you see this doing in the next five to 10 years? Okay. In the next five to 10 years, the idea is to similar to Amazon have internal departments in boost. Like, all right, this department takes care of the promotion and PR. This department takes care of marketing and design. Then a third one, this one takes care of operations. So basically we're going to go from startup phase into, you know, more so sustainable business and then just focus on doubling down to grow market share because there are some competitors, but the only problem is that it's fragmented upon every service. So if you look at Google, Google has a bunch of services, Google Maps, Google Search. And so Google Maps and Apple Maps, it's like most people use Google Maps, but it wasn't always that way. They had to kind of fragment and attack that way. So we would just kind of grow internally. And on the outside, what the other people would see, I'm assuming if they're not super business minded, right? Just consumers, we would have probably every service we'd have for an artist in kind of like an accelerator in which you're an artist with nothing, you come and we have a full roadmap, hands off. We give you the education and do it for you. So it'll be like show and tell, show you what's going on behind the scenes, do it for you. 
and then show you case studies. And then once that's done, then you can just stop or continue whatever you want. And it's totally up to you. Just kind of from nothing up until uh, having a fan base, because that's our main value thing, getting a fan base, people that care, not just the biggest numbers, people that are willing to, you know, buy the tickets to your show, see your merch. And it's a creative industry to help creative industries, to help creative artists, I mean. Right, right. No, I agree. Yes. Yeah, I hope it's, that wasn't too much at once, you know? <laughs> that was great. That was a great answer, man. Listen, man, you're giving me all the tips of the tr- uh, tips and tricks I need to learn of your business. So that's awesome, man. You know what I'm saying? Again, this is for the audience members. You know, I want them to get as much knowledge as possible from you to, in case they want to start a, a boost collective of their own. They, they kind of. Sure. Oh, the I'll tell these guys if you want to start like a boost type thing, don't do everything at once. Start with one main thing and then just. But once that thing, okay, think about this. There's like a pond, all right? Then there's a bunch of fish. And so do you want to be a big fish in a small pond only because that's going to give you the leverage to move on to other things? So focus on one small thing that can give you the highest rate of return, the highest whatever, and then slowly branch up because we made the mistake of biting more than we could chew and having to like size down. Tell me about that. What was that mistake? All right, so what happened is... so. Basically, look at us now. We tried to do this a while ago, but it didn't work because sure, we got the orders in because the marketing was top notch, if I say myself. <laughs> <laughs> but then what happened is we didn't have the wisdom to know how to actually operate with those many orders. So we got unhappy clients. Remember, lifetime value, the lifetime value was really low. It just was not in our best interest. And it was a waste of time, effort, and money. And the lesson that we learned was, all right, stick to what you're good at and be good, you know? Be good. If I could say anything, just be good. Right. That's what's up, man. I love it, man. So being that, it sounds like you guys are all head on in this business. You know, it's not the horse with the blind is on, right? So tell me about the work-life balance, man. I mean, how do you how do you manage your time when it comes? Because it says it sounds like you're all in. You're doing nothing but trying to build this a success. But, you know, how do you balance this, man? You know, somebody could go crazy just focusing on work. 24 seven, you might blow your brains out. Okay. That's, that's sick because mm, what happened is I find that when it comes to work-life balance, you can't have that at a startup. It's non-negotiable. It's, right. it's not <laughs> something people want to hear. It, it really isn't. I don't want to tell people that it's not fun, but you can't have a lifestyle and also growth at the same time, because let me explain it like this way. Okay. There, there, every single force in the universe is trying to keep you from growing whether it's like they're doing it on purpose on planet earth, there's limited resources, limited money, limited cash, time is ticking. So if you're just trying to do something on the side and still have a lifestyle, still, you know, see a girlfriend four times a week, hang out with the buddies. What's going to happen is some other dudes that aren't doing that, that are just loners with no friends are going to find more time and energy to outwork you. So you have to be obsessed and put everything forward. That being said, you can make compromises. Like Damien, for example, he flew to Romania two days ago. He's in Romania seeing his family. He's Romanian, by the way. And so he's still working from his, you know, uh, iMac just in Romania. And so me, I always work on my computer, whatever, but I always find time to go for a walk. You know, I go on a Tinder date every week or so, every two weeks, maybe. Just like <laughs> 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 and man, success is not bad. You know, quarantine has right. done us good. So the main thing is just, you got to make sure that you make this priority number one, everything else has to be secondary. But if that's not something you want, you got to be honest with yourself and not waste yours or anybody else's time with it. You know? Oh yeah, man. I totally agree. 100% man. Cause I find it very difficult to manage my time and my, you know, cause I got, I got a girl, right. You know, so they always want time, you know what I'm saying? And we live together on top of that. So it could be a little bit difficult. You know, I don't really hang out with my boys as much, you know, during the whole COVID time. So that yeah. kind of saved me some time from doing that. But, you know, I'm, I'm literally on my phone and in front of this computer. I want to say like 10 to 12 hours a day, man. You know what I'm saying? Even on the weekend sometimes, you know, but at the same time, you know, it's, when we do spend time together, me and my girl, we, we, we took a road trip to Laguna Beach, like, that time is precious, you know what I'm saying? Once you're experiencing it, you're sightseeing and all of that. So I definitely appreciate it when I'm in it, you know what I'm saying? But when I'm just working, I'm like, I don't have time for nobody, nothing else. But, you know, I definitely could appreciate that balance and what it does for the mind. You know, it's good to have that 
little mini reset when you can, you know, so you come back tenfold, you know what I'm saying? Ready for war when it's back to get on grind mode, you know what I'm saying? So no, I love I love what you said just now, man. I'm a farmer. People don't know this. I don't it's not something you flex. So I'm not like, yo, I'm a farmer. So uh, I'm and you should. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. I, I do some agricultural projects to the side, right? Like my uh, sister's man, uh, they're, they have a land there. They're farmers, right? And so farmer is like, dude, farmers are the sickest people on earth. The people mm. think it's still like backwards with like the wheat in the mouth, just like yeah, spinning. Yeah, yeah. Not, they're just people that just happen to have a farm. But mm. back to my main point, I find whenever I go out to the farm and like, you know, you go sledding ATVs or just like go swimming, it's, those moments make up for all of the not doing stuff in the city while I'm working. So I find mm. you need to make sure if you have no work-life balance, which you probably don't as an artist, especially during COVID, you got to make sure that you got to do all your fun stuff as far as away from your workspace as possible to mentally get that distinction. 100%, 100%. And I could imagine, I mean, now that we talk about COVID, I mean, I'm sure it affected your business greatly when it comes to more sales because everybody's home. Everybody wants to make a presence online. So, I mean, did, did, did it help your business, COVID? That's a good question because, so what happened is um, Damien got this and then he gave it to me because he, he just didn't use it. And so I got a whole bunch of uh, new audio equipment, right? And so mm -hmm. I figured, hmm, if I got new audio equipment, then a bunch of other people that don't make music started getting audio equipment, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like the effects of uh, COVID on the music business isn't as drastic. Like it's huge, but it didn't compound yet. I feel like let's give it eight more months. Once people have started making music and finally get good and ready to promote at that point, it's going to be sick. That's why we spend so much in ads. Will secret because we know mm -hmm. once those people that make music, watch tutorials, follow tapes page on producing, when it comes time to promote, we already built that connection with them and you know, the lifetime value is already there. So I find that that's like, look, take a longer term approach for COVID because the effects are long term. It, it may not seem it, but I believe so. Look with my heart. That's what's up, man. I like that answer. Okay. What's your customer acquisition cost? Do you know? The customer acquisition cost. Um, damn, Ronan wouldn't let me. So our main thing that we go for right now is return on ad spend, our ROAS, only mm -hmm. because customer acquisition cost is very complex to to tell you right now, because right. it also depends on stuff like, since it's like a service industry, not a product thing, a guy, if you make one email and he's going to make his day, he's going to spend another $300 right there just because he trusts you. Or a guy, if you're late and he's just the kind of guy that doesn't like, you know, people wasting his time, I mean, respectable, yeah. respectable. Mm -hmm. He may just never buy anything ever again. So it's always about return on ad spend. And as for those numbers, yeah, Ronan would not want me telling that on a live podcast, you know? <laughs> oh, no, it's all, it's all good, man. I'm not trying to get you in trouble. I ain't trying to get you cut off the team. I ain't trying to do none of that, man. I'm just... Hey, we're I'm just forever, man. We're forever. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I, I, was just, I was just curious, you know, because you see a lot of cust uh, startup companies that don't really know those numbers or, you know, can't really I, I find themselves just spending, spending, spending like $300 on ads here, $400 on marketing and engineering here and the next thing you know they 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 after they spend like 700 bucks then they got a customer and it's like whoa like you know you don't really <laughs> want to spend that much to acquire one customer you know so i was just i was just curious to know but that's cool man you know no no, no actually i do have i do want to give you a gem though i do want to give you a gem mm -hmm. so i want to say that data is practically everything and so because because of facebook pixel because of squares we have data on every every single thing there's a spreadsheet for it just Basically, there's mm -hmm. a spreadsheet with your name in it. I'm not joking. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah, so what happened is I find it, it's easy if you just start right now and document everything because what happens after a month, you're going to notice trends that you've never seen before. And so, you know, if you're a startup dude and you're, in, you're more creative, like and you're, not, you're less operational, but more like creative, then mm -hmm. it's really important to at least push yourself to document because at that point, once the stuff that your blind spot that naturally you aren't good at is going to become shown to you. Mm. Same thing for producers. If you're going to sell beats, literally write a spreadsheet of every guy. How many times did you reach out to him? Only one time. You always need to have like a follow-up thing. You need to make sure you have a d d download gate uh, campaign set up. You need to you just make sure that all the numbers, you need to know your numbers and your counting. 
That's a fact. That's a fact. Hell yeah, especially if you want to get some investors coming in. You definitely got to know those numbers because they're going to want to know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, no, but I appreciate your time, man. I mean, let the people know where they can acquire your services. You know what I'm saying? When is the best time to contact a company like yours as an artist? You know, co- go, yes, actually answer that question. Yeah, when when is the best time for artists to kind of reach out to Boost Collective? All right, good question. The best time to reach out to Boost Collective is on your third release because one, your first release will be garbage and it's going to manage your expectations are going to be managed. You're not going to, you know what I mean? You're not going to think you're the next, like, you know, guy that's you're not going to be the next little Nas X most likely on yeah. your first release. So right. don't, don't come to us on your first release. And also on your second release, you finally understood the feedback from the first one to improve on the second one. So you understand a little bit about where you stand and your position, where you want to go. So on the third release, once those two prerequisites are done, then I would say is the best time to come because number one, know thyself, you know yourself a little bit better. And right. number two, you already understand a little bit how the industry runs and we'll be able to provide the stuff that you don't know. So we're going to be helping each other the most. Cause remember, I only get paid when I'm helping you, you know what I mean? It's like, like I'm literally binded to provide you value if I want to continue being with you in this relationship. So it's like, always make sure that you have that part, like your end good, because then I'm going to do mine good too. Hey, that's a fact. You couldn't have ended it no better, man. Let the people know where they could contact you, where they could follow Boots Collective and just enjoy the journey with you, man. All right, sick, man. All right, if you want to reach us out, boostcollective.ca, not .com, .ca. <laughs> Canadian company, you know, .ca. Remember that. Tattoo it on your forehead, man. Just let everybody know, .ca. <laughs> Another thing right. is hit our Instagram, at Boost Collective. And our YouTube, man, we're going to take over YouTube. Just watch. You know, I'm saying it right now. Boost is going to take over YouTube. I can't wait. I can't wait to see it, man. How are you going to take over YouTube, man? Take over YouTube, man. We're going to have the best videos and we're not going to do no more theory. We've done that. We've seen we've seen the videos in the game. Nothing personal. Just my competitive spirit flaring up right now. But it's like we're telling you they're telling you theory. How to grow your followers. They tell you, do this, this, this. Well, how about you show me for once? I'm sick and tired of like just theory. Let's get some street smarts up in here. We make music. We're not out here, you know, trying to like learn about, okay, maybe this, let's just show me how it is step by step, do a tutorial and let's get it. And I plan on being the first one to do it well. Awesome. So when, when does that air? Cause I want to see that video. I'm waiting for that one. That Man, was I'm working on cool. one right now, dog. Just give me, uh, Honestly, I need to speak with the team about making a formal plan before I tell you. But just know yeah. really soon we're going to have our first, uh, you know, tutorial video that's going to go step by step, showing you the full process for free on YouTube. Awesome, man. Well, no course sign up, just get the value. That's a fact. And, I, and I'm a firm believer of that, man, because I actually started a... Um, uh, how to start your podcast and expensively course. And I gave it out for free. You know what I'm saying? It's doing really well. At first I was going to charge and I got like a few people to pay, but then I was like, you know, I'd rather just give this information for free, get the views, you know what I'm saying? And then just kind of figure it out along the way. Cause everybody's holding all this information hostage that can help people. And I understand, you know, you can use that as leverage to make money, but you know, something, you know, you could teach somebody, somebody else, but a little course, like they're not little course, but a course, you know, you can give that information for free, gain value, and you never know what that can lead to in the future. You know what I'm saying? So I commend you for Yo, that. Yo, we got to talk about you. that for like 10, 15 minutes after this thing. You know, I have some stuff I want to tell you about, and then, you know, just game for you. Just all the Same, same, same here, man. You. Same here. I'm actually uh, interested in, uh, you know, joining the journey, man, if possible. But we'll talk offline, man. Let me yeah, go ahead yeah, and wrap yeah. this up now. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Sleep is for Billionaires, the podcast. Got my man Jabari representing Boost Collective. Johnny Vegas representing Sleep is for Billionaires. Make sure you get yourself some of this good old merch. Like and subscribe on the channel. Stay tuned for more episodes to come. Thank you for watching. Yeah. I want to be a billionaire. Uh, I ain't getting no sleep nah. till I see a milli every week. Yeah. I want to be a billionaire. Uh, I ain't getting no sleep nah. till I see a billy every week. Uh, I want to be a billionaire. Billionaire. I want to be a billionaire. Billionaire. I want to be a billionaire. I ain't getting no sleep nah. till I see a billy every week. Yeah. I ain't gonna be a billionaire. I just can't handle business. Yeah. Had too many dreams.